Greetings, Preacher Rick with you today on a special day. My son told me the other day, he's the one that transfers all of our live at five here on Facebook over to Facebook, I mean over to uh, YouTube, and he does that each day that he can, and he reminded me that today, that this Wednesday, uh, that March the 3rd, that it would be sermon number 300 since the pandemic started, so we praise God, so it's a special day, 300 sermons, and they're all there for your uh uh, at your fingertips for you to go listen to anytime the Lord leads you and you need to hear a sermon. We started out and I want to share with you before we turn to God's word today how to, to get to him. Just go to my Facebook page and you'll see my puppy there behind Teresa and I and uh, just click on it and you'll be able to go to the link that goes to uh, YouTube uh, on my son's Heath's page. All 300 sermons will be there. And if you go back to the beginning, you keep clicking, you get back to the first sermon. It starts in Genesis and the first 66 books go all the way to Revelation. That's how God got me on Facebook. That's how God got me started uh, preaching 10 minutes a day ever since the pandemic started. And I've been trying to, my best to mind the Lord, and I hope you have too. And I've been minding the Lord. and I, I didn't get on every day because we traveled out west last summer and we had a lot of spots where I had no signal but every day we could we preach and we still do live at five every day eastern standard time so click on that little puppy there on my facebook page and you'll find all 300 sermons and may the lord bless you you can go genesis through revelations the first 66 sermons that's how god directed me after that the patriarchs a lot of them and then just various sermons since so we're on sermon number 300 today, as God has blessed. And as, as I was thinking of that this morning, uh, of course, what came to my mind was Gideon. As soon as I thought of it, and I thought, well, Lord, that's where I'm going. Gideon and his 300 men that defeated an army of somewhere between 32 and 40 some thousand with God's help. Amen. It was all God. God reduced his army to 300 men. We'll read about that in a second. And that, of course, this being day 300, that's why it came to my mind. I want to read to you something else about 300 over in the book of Genesis. It says in the fifth chapter of Genesis, and Enoch, and any of you Bible scholars that read your Bible know that he's the one that got translated. He didn't see death, and God took him because he had this testimony. It pleased God. It says in chapter 5 and verse 22, And Enoch walked with God after he begat Bethulah. Now, you'll recognize that name. Oldest recorded living man in the Bible, uh, Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. Now, that's uh, significant for some reason, but he, after he, uh, Methuselah was born, his son, Enoch's son, Enoch didn't see death, and Methuselah lived to be 969 years old. But after Enoch was born, Methuselah was 300 years old before God took, translated Enoch and took him home. So there's something about that number 300. Well, it's also in the next chapter of the Bible. Genesis, the uh, sixth chapter, we see the number 300 again. So maybe this sermon's especially special today because of the number 300. God knows. In the sixth chapter of Genesis, in the 15th verse, we'll read a little bit about God giving Noah the instructions to build the ark. And he said in that verse, And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300, 300 cubits. So we see it there again. So we see that 300 years old Enoch lived after Methuselah was born. We see the ark was uh, 300 cubits long to be built by Noah. And uh, I've got other ones that I'll share with you. Uh, something about it. In Genesis, I'm not going to read it in the 45th chapter in the 22nd verse. Uh, remember Joseph, how uh, he became a ruler over Egypt and saved his family and all the folks in that area over God using him. And his brothers that had sold him into slavery, they all finally found out who he was and how he was over them. Well, in the 45th chapter, in the 22nd verse, for some reason or another, young Benjamin, that his younger brother that didn't sell him into slavery, he gave him 300 pieces of silver. 
Why was it 300? I do not know. But they say that 300 is linked a lot to, uh, it's associated with victory over the enemy, and it's associated with bloodshed, and it's also associated with death and burial. Well, we'll look in the New Testament before we actually turn to Gideon, and I'll show you what I mean about it being associated with death and burial. And that's over in the New Testament in Mark. In Mark, the 14th chapter, 4 through 5. Mark 14, 4 through 5, 4 and 5 reads like this. And there were some that had indignation with themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? That's when Mary anointed Jesus' feet and wiped with oil and wiped his uh, feet with her hair. And there were people upset about it because it was very expensive stuff she was using. For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence. There's that 300 again. And have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For you have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye you, you will, ye you may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial for her. So because of that being worth 300, I'm preaching it here on Facebook. And God said it would be preached wherever his gospel was preached. Amen. Now let's look at the 300 with Gideon. In case you're not a Bible scholar and you don't do a lot of study in your Bible, I hope you do. And if you don't, I hope you learn to. But in the book of Judges, you'll see Gideon. Now there's, uh, that's a famous name, Gideon. Uh, you'll see Gideon Bibles, and used to at least, in motels and uh, hospitals. You, they're still out there, but not as plentiful as they used to be. But uh, Gideon Bibles, named after this man, uh, because they're a small group of businessmen that uh, through nonprofit and no, making no money on their own, come together and collect money to buy Bibles to put them out for people to read. It's a wonderful ministry. Well, it, that they're named after Gideon because Gideon was a small group. And I'll just read 7 and 6, so we'll have a few minutes to preach. It says there, And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand in their mouth, were 300 men. So it's saying... If you read the whole chapter, that he had a big army. And part of them, 22,000, and, and uh, had gone back home because he told them, if you're fearful or afraid, go back to Gilead in verse 3. And there returned to the people 20 and 2,000. That's a big army to lose. And there remained 10,000. Well, God said to get it. He said, it's still too big. Now, remember, they were fighting a big army. Uh, they said uh, there were 32,000 of them, and, and the army they were fighting, there was at least four for each one of them. So you're looking at somewhere around a, you know, 130, 140,000 people, a lot. Big army, maybe more. And it says here in uh, verse 5 and 6, of the number of them that lapped, that's how he te God told him to do it, the, the ones that lapped, putting their hands in their mouth, were 300 men when they went down to get a drink in the river. But all the rest of them bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites unto thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man into his place. And over in verse 16 it says, that he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand, and empty pitchers, and lamps within the pitchers. And he had heard about what the men were talking about in camp to make it short. And they yelled out the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they scared the people so bad they ran over each other. Uh, and that great big army got ran off and killing each other and everything you can imagine got defeated uh, by those 300 men being obedient unto God. Uh, obedience, the Bible says, is better than sacrifice. Now, it's a good thing to sacrifice. Uh, it's a good thing to sacrifice your time to help the needy. Uh, it's a good thing to sacrifice your money to help the poor. Uh, it's a good thing 
willing to sacrifice a lot of things that you can uh, build the church with or uh, add to uh, uh, the number that come or any way you might help uh, uh, God's uh, uh, church uh, flourish. Well, that's a good thing to sacrifice. Uh, but the Bible says uh, obedience is greater. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, uh, so that means if we'll be obedient and Gideon uh, was obedient to God's call and God has called us. Uh, uh, thank God forever. Maybe not with the number 300 uh, uh, like he did Gideon, uh, uh, but uh, let it be, uh, uh, thank God, a lesson uh, that you learn from that God can take a little and make a lot out of it. Uh, uh, there's an old song that says, little is much uh, when God is in. And I'm just a small time little country preacher. Uh, I realize uh, uh, that I'm nothing. Uh, Why well, uh, Nobody knows my name and I'm not uh, concerned about anybody knowing my name. Uh, uh, but I am concerned uh, about them knowing the name I'm preaching about. And his name is Jesus. Uh, thank God. And that's all that really matters in all of our life. Uh, uh, that Jesus Christ is glorified by the life we live. Uh, remember, little is much uh, when God is in it. Uh, uh, thank God that he can take this little sermon, uh, this little ten minutes a day. Uh, uh, thank God and he can save the world uh, if people will just take heed to the gospel because that's all I know to preach uh, is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to get souls saved, uh, uh, to encourage the church uh, and to save the lost uh, and all for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why God made the numbers smaller uh, so men uh, wouldn't pat themselves on the back uh, and take the credit for beating uh, the Midianites, uh, but they'd give God the credit. they say, God, uh, uh, thank God, defeated that great big army uh, that was swarming like bees around us. Uh, glory to his name. He took 300 men, uh, uh, thank God, uh, and he went out and scared them off uh, and they killed them own, their own selves or ran over their own selves uh, and God uh, uh, let uh, the uh, children of Israel have uh, the spoil that they left behind. Uh, uh, thank God. Uh, uh, God uh, uh, will take care of his children and we need to realize, as I said, uh, uh, thank God that little is much uh, when God is in it. Uh, uh, there's an old song, as I said. Uh, it goes like this. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's the name I want to go in. You and I want to go off in his name. I want to preach in his name. These 300 sermons have all been for the name of Jesus, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if he gives me breath and gives me the ability, I'll put more on. I'll keep on keeping on. And you pray for me and I'll pray for you. We sure need one another's prayer. The Bible says, pray ye one for another. Why? Because the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Much good can come out of our prayers. Uh, pray for all of our friends and loved ones. Uh, someone new I met today, I pray for Amanda. And I pray for all the others uh, that we meet along the way. I, I met Diane the other day. I pray for her. And you're on my prayer list. And I want you to know that. And I appreciate if you put me on your prayer list. We need one another's prayers. God bless each and every one of you that are with us today. May God bless you, beloved, as only he can. Little as much when God is in it. This is Preacher Rick. Push that share button. Get it out there. God bless you, beloved. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.